the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire thirdly i say to you that you will weep and lament but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful but your sorrow will be turned into joy the god of turnaround see that while i was in the place of prayer i was privileged to see a vision and in the vision i saw i saw a man that was walking and the man was walking the man was dressed in dirty garments dirty garments that look old and torn you understand me the garments were old and torn with holes on the garments and the man was walking all of a sudden as the man was walking i saw a wind blow across the man and when the wind left i saw the man dressed in the garments of a king and i was like what is happening and god said he said my son i am the god of turnaround and i understood that that is god's word for his people there is about to be a release of an anointing from heaven to to turn around sorrow into joy he is the god of turnaround see that god of turnarounds so are you following me the scripture the lord says he said you will have sorrow that you will be turned into joy friends when i saw this vision i was filled with joy i let you to understand when the man began walking in the realm of the spirit the man was actually i mean the dresses were old they were torn and with holes on them and the man was crying he was in tears weeping and walking and it's like there was darkness around the man and i was watching the vision and i was seeing the man weeping it's like everything was against that man and the man was walking and it's like i saw arrows flying upon the man and his clothes were torn the places the place was dark as if all of a sudden i saw a wind descend from heaven now the wind surrounded him like you know a real wind as the wind left i saw the man dressed as a king i mean dressed as a king with royal garment all gold and diamond and i said how was this and i heard the voice my son i am the god of turnarounds tell my people this is the word i came with from heaven tell my people that i the lord have seen their tears i have heard their prayer and by my favor I shall turn their lives around. Amen. Say the God of turnarounds. The God of turnarounds. See that. Something is about to happen. You don't get what I'm saying. It's going to be unexpected. You will not understand the dimension of it. It's going to be unexpected. But when people ask you, tell them, the God, if he has visited me. The God of tolerance. The God of tolerance. The God of tolerance. Psalm 30 verse 11. He said, you have turned my mourning into dancing. Halaka <laughs> basha. You have turned my mourning into dancing. The God of turnaround is the one that visits his people to turn their mourning into dancing. You have turned my mourning into dancing. It means he was crying. He was in mourning. But when God visited him, he changed everything. The visitation of the Most High. It preserves the people. Job said, your visitation has given me favor and life. Your visitation. Oh my God. The God of what? Of tolerance. People of God. Our God is great. Our God is awesome our God is mighty our God is faithful 
He said, most assuredly, you will have sorrow. So sorrow is, is, is a sure part. Second Peter 5 verse 10, he says, And the God of all grace, after that you have suffered a while, shall perfect you, shall establish you, shall strengthen you, and settle you. In other words, the, the, the settlement you enjoy from heaven depends on the intensity of your persecution because of the kingdom. The settlement, that is the, 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 the quality of the settlement you enjoy from heaven depends on the, the, the intensity of your persecution for the sake of the gospel. So the more you are persecuted, the more you are being qualified for a better settlement. He is a God that settles people. God is not a debtor. God cannot owe any man. God cannot be mocked. There is nobody that gives himself to service to God and God does not reward him. He said, for we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. He said, I have not asked you to seek me in vain. When you pray, he rewards. When you fast, he rewards. There is a reward for holiness. Child of God, listen to me very well. There is a reward prepared by God for everything you do for him. Everything. Praising God. Watch everything you do for God. There is a reward. He has more than enough. More than enough supply. Everything with God is abundant. There is no scarcity in heaven. There is no dryness in the stores of heaven. So whatever you are asking for, you must know that God has more than enough for what you need. He has more than enough. Are you following me here? He said, most assuredly, you shall have so. You shall have so. You shall have so. You shall have so. So Christianity is not a means to escape the sorrows and troubles of this world. The fact that you are a Christian does not mean you will not be attacked. It does not mean you will not be persecuted. No, stop thinking wrongly. But you need to understand that your persecution is working a better reward for you. Everything worked for what? So, whatever you are going through now, if you are truly of God, it will work for your good. No matter how the devil brings it, no matter how he presents it, I like you to have this understanding that if the hand of God is behind the, the events of your life, though they are painful, they will end up for your good. If the hand of God is behind the occurrences of your life, though they may be painful at the end, they shall turn around to be gainful, they shall turn out to be gainful at the end of the day. Your testimony will comprise of your test. It is what you go through that gives you that gives you a, a crown in the kingdom of God. I like you to understand that if God permits certain things to happen to you, He did not permit, He did not allow those things because He wants to kill you. There's a reason. There's a reason. The devil wants you to think that God is wicked to you. God is not wicked to you. There is a reason. Sometimes when we go through, you know. Every temptation is an attempt by the devil to make you doubt God's love for you. Nothing attacks. Listen to me. You may believe that God loves you, but if you enter a problem, you'll be like, ah, if God loves me, why, why am I sick? Has it ever happened to you? The Bible says, God said when Jesus was baptized, Matthew chapter 3, this is my beloved son. Friend, in the next chapter, Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, the devil came and said, if you're the son of God, turn salt into bread. In other words, if God loves you, why are you hungry? If God loves you, why are you not married? If God loves you, why don't you have a child? So, most often when we attempt it and on that trial, the, the purpose of Satan is to make us doubt that God loves us. Why? Be listen to me. Your, your, your sustainers in the kingdom of God is rooted in your belief in the love of God. The day you stop believing that God loves you, you fall off from grace. You fall off from your place in God. It is by your, it's by your faith that God loves me everything about for God so loved the world so so Christianity is born out of the love of God and can only be sustained by that love so when the devil can succeed to make you think that God does not love you it turns your heart from God are you following me here 
your sustainers in the kingdom of God is rooted in your faith in the love of God. You must believe that he loves you. You must believe it. No matter what the devil brings your way, you must believe it that God, I, I, I may not understand what I'm going through, but sir, you love me. Because if you stop believing that he loves you, oh boy, you are finished. Now, the misunderstanding most of us has is that if God loves me, I will not go through pain. Have you studied John chapter 11 verse 4? They said, sir, the one whom you love is sick. He loves him but he's sick. What does that tell me, people of God? He loved Lazarus but he was sick. Here they reply, but because I love him, this sickness is not unto death. Why is it not unto death? Not because he has faith. Because I love him. It would be for the glory of God. Because I love him. Because I love him. So, the love of God may not exempt you from the troubles of this world, but it will deliver you out of them all. All. Why do we see some Christians go through challenges and they get overwhelmed? It's because at one point in that challenge, they started doubting that God loves them. No matter what you go through, if there is something you must never take out of your spirit, God loves me. Sometimes they will tell you, God hates you, you are a sinner. It's not you that did abortion. You should say, not true, not true. Be careful. Oh. Guilty conscience is the greatest weapon that the devil uses to turn the heart of Christians from the love of God. It is not God who hates you. It is you who have turned your heart from his love because you think he hates you. And as a man thinks, so is he. So there are more, many times Satan will bring up your mistakes and tell you that because of this thing you did, God is very angry with you. It is true, God was angry. But the anger, listen to me, the death of Christ on, on, on the cross is, is the judgment of God's anger. The anger that God had for us, he put it on Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. Did you answer the Lord loves me? Now listen to me. This aspect is so important. Eh? That the Bible says that, Jesus said in John 17 verse 20 to 22, he says, the glory you gave me, I have given them, that they may know that you love them as you love me. Listen to his prayer. Let these people know that you love them. Why is it so important to know that God loves you? Why? Uh, listen, I want to show you one reason why many of us shout, shout, we never see God. We, we, ay, Lord help me, give me grace. We really come to God and we pray. But we have a problem in our mind. We think that God is angry with us. We think that God is the one behind our problem. It's God that does not want to give me a child. God is angry with me because I did abortion. As long as you still have that mindset, it will hinder you from receiving for him. Bible says in love there is no fear. Friend, if you fear the devil, it means you don't love God. <laughs> you can't fear God and fear Satan. It cannot work. No, it's not possible. If you fear God, you cannot fear Satan. Listen to me. The, one of the things that the, the church we enter the maturity in the kingdom when Christians have the understanding of God's love. Whether we come and preach what? Until people feel the love of God. That story will be talking. Look at when Jesus came. Can I show you? He didn't even preach love. He demonstrated love. Because he knew. A prostitute entered when he was talking. And the Pharisees got angry. If this man is a prophet, how can you allow a prostitute to touch you? And Jesus replied, he said, he who is forgiving much loves much. Love. The love of God is so profound that it cannot be understood by explanation. It can only be understood by experience. No matter what I teach you, I can only open your heart until you encounter and experience that love. You can keep crying, God help me, God help me. You don't really mean that prayer. If you come and you are praying in a point of desperation, you will not see God. There must be an understanding that I am speaking to my father who loves me. That they may know that you love them as you love me. So the presence of sorrow does not mean that God hates me. Look at Job. The man lost 
10 children in a day and lost everything he had in a day uh, the, the, and, and there is no point in time that he showed that God hated him please be careful do not allow I'm saying this because you cannot experience the God of turn around if you doubt that he loves you please you may not have faith you know but never doubt that God loves you why because blessings is not a proof of the love of God is a sign of the mercy of God the proof of God's love is the death of Christ on the cross how do I know that God loves me Jesus died for me God giving you a child is not proof that he loves you. God giving you a job is not proof that he loves you. Those are mercy. It is mercy. God shows you mercy. He gives you a child, a job, a house. The only proof for God so loved the word that he gave his son. So what is the proof of God's love? The, 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 the son. So how do I know that God loves me? Jesus died for me. How do you know that God loves you? So, the love of God should not be measured by material possessions, but by the gift of salvation. Does God love you? What is the proof? I'm trying to rearrange your mind. Because some people say, God loves me. If God loves me, why don't I have a child? But Jesus died for you. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, He says, He that gave us His Son, will He not also freely give us everything with Him? Please, I'm trying to attack your mind. Say, God loves me. You know, see, there are many of us here. Because of the problems and the things we have gone through, our heart has been shattered, scattered, and broken by problems. But I'm trying to open your heart that God loves you. Listen to me. Do not take your trouble and say, God loves you. I'm telling you the truth. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you what you are so god's presence does not exempt a man from going through trial but it's an assurance that you'll be delivered from it you follow me the presence of god may not exempt you from going through trials but it is an assurance that you'll be delivered from it that no matter what i go through if god is with me the only thing you should check in times of problem is baba god there and baba god is always there i shall never leave you not forsake you. I shall never, even if you sin, I shall not leave you. It's only you that is leaving him. Are this for hearing me at all? God has spoken and God cannot change it. I shall not leave you. When you sin, you are the one who left. He is still there. Come on. When Adam sinned, is it not God that came? Adam ran away. God still came. God came. Friend, God is not threatened by sin. But sin has ability to hinder you from experiencing him, even if he's present. Sin does not frighten God. God cannot be frightened. But that when there is sin, sin has power to cover you, not him. Sin cannot cover you. you oh my God. When I would say sin has covered his face, in a dimension which it is you that is covered, he's not seeing you because you are under the veil of sin. Lift your hand and say, God loves me. Shout it louder. Shout it louder people of God if there's an issue I've seen today so many people are going through pain going through problems going through shame so many Christians are confused ask himself does God love me a man of God we fast and pray fast and pray fast and pray fast and pray yet the church does not grow people will come to church the pastor will preach they will believe all the pastor has preached yet nothing changes let me tell you this thing the, 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 the dimension of God you experience depend on the revelation of God you receive when I'm telling you that is the God of turn around, I'm trying to show you another face of God. I'm not just talking about the God that saved you. I'm talking about a God that can heal you. A God that can bless you. A God that can take you from the gutter to the throne. It is you have met the God of salvation. It's time to meet the God of turn around. The one that can undo anything at any time in any place. He called light out of darkness. The God of what? Tonara. So many times we see a lot of pain. People go through pain. They go through shame. And their faith is broken. 
that trust in God is broken, that service to God is attacked. Some people can no longer pray again by reason of what they have gone through. Jesus said, I assure you in this way, you will have sorrow. He said, but don't worry, let me end the prophecy. Your sorrow will be turned to joy. So as sure as they exist weeping in the night, they also exist joy in the morning. They prove that there is money, that there is night. They prove that there is healing, that there is sickness. My God, my God. Weeping may endure for the night. Don't stop there. As long as there is a night. So every time I see the night, the night is a prophecy that after him is the morning. If I see the afternoon, I may cry. But if I am in the night, I understand by revelation and experience that after the night, it is the morning. So there is a certain understanding you must have that you serve God who is too good to allow you down like a fool. You, a, the God you serve, he is too good and too faithful to allow the devil play with your life anyhow. You are not serving a wicked God. He said, if you being men know how to give good gift to your children huh? so a man cannot be better in goodness than God a God that healed the sick that changes people's story without anybody's approval <laughs> when he begins to operate he does not seek the approval of a man when they listen to me every time the God of turn around wants to intervene in your affair it does not seek the count the approval of a man people just see it happen they don't understand they don't understand they, they, they look at you that like, is this person yes he has met god i'm trying to tell you this evening i came to introduce god to you in a different face that this god that saved you can also heal you he can also deliver you he can also prosper you child of god it is not wisdom to depend on God for salvation and depend on man for the things in the flesh. Depend on God for a job. Depend on God for everything. There is nothing bad in coming to God for miracles. It is an acknowledgement that he is a miracle worker. But there is everything bad in coming to him and not loving him after he works for you. Jesus said, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Now Jesus took him. Why? Please, people need to see the goodness of God. This world will not believe if they don't see God in our lives. They must look at you that from the time you began coming to church, something happened. They, they must see that turn around. The evidence and the seal of God's work in your life is the turn around in the affairs of your life. That they, they say, but how, what happened? I have read the Bible and I look, listen to me. Jesus did not preach like us. In fact, we have even preached more messages than him. If you see the life of Jesus, he spent more time doing things than talking things. When he met the sick, he will heal them. He will not teach them 15 keys of healing. He will heal them. By that healing, they will understand that he is the healer. It's not about telling you that Jesus is the healer. It is showing you that he is the healer by healing you. Are you following what I'm saying here? Read the Bible. There is no time that things were bad and they call for Jesus and he's not changed. Read the whole Bible. They said a woman, a woman, uh, 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 she had an issue of blood and she was bleeding for 12 years. Listen, he says she, for 12 years this woman has been bleeding, going through pain and shit. Bible specifies she has spent so much on doctors, but she only grew worse. She spent everything on man. He says she heard about Jesus. She didn't sow any seed, no prophetic seed, nothing. She just came and touched his garment and an affliction for 12 years ended in a second. The God of the turnaround. There was a man called Jairus. His daughter was sick and he called for Jesus while they were on the way. The man's daughter died. He said when Jesus came to the house The people were weeping And he looked at them and said she is asleep And the people began to laugh And he entered the room and prayed for her And the girl came back to life The place that was a buried in a funeral People were crying my daughter is dead When Jesus finished The, the funeral ground became a testimony house That is the God of the turnaround There was a man called Bartimaeus The man was blind for a long time And Jesus was passing by 
and he began to cry son of David have mercy on me and Jesus turned and called for him when Jesus prayed for him his eyes opened that is the God of the turnaround there was a man at the pool of Bethesda the man had been there for 38 years 38 years he had been sick and afflicted oppressed and confused and tormented and Jesus stepped there do you want to walk 38 years of affliction terminated by a word that is the God of the turnaround there was a man that was mad for more than 10 years the man was living in the tomb living among dead men and Jesus crossed the water and when Jesus stepped his leg the demons in the man they ran and they bowed down and Jesus commanded the devils out the Bible says and the people in the city when they came and they saw the man dressed in his right mind for more than 10 years that man never wore a dress for more than 10 years the man never sat down and they say what happened the God of Turner a man got sick and the man died and they buried the man and the whole village was crying and Jesus came as he came people were in tears and he said take me to the tomb and they began saying sir please he is dead he said take me there and he got to the tomb he said roll away the stone and Martha said sir Mary said sir please by now he is smelling her listen to me child of God there are times you have trouble even God wants to help you your own brother will this college in that it is the the sister of Lazarus that said he is smelling her but the Bible says and he stepped ahead and he said to her roll away the stone if you believe you will see the glory of God and she rolled away the stone and he said Lazarus comfort and the Bible specify he that was dead buried for four days biology says after three days a man begins to decompose I like you to understand Lazarus was not just dead his flesh had gone away his hair was rotten the body was decomposed and the Lord spoke a word and every part of his flesh came back now let us imagine something when a man dies there are some things called worms worms come and eat your flesh so when Lazarus died the worms came and ate his flesh but when Jesus spoke the word the everything came back and Lazarus came out that is the God of the turnaround in Luke chapter 7 the Bible says he was going out of the town in the city of Nain and a woman was carrying her son in a coffin her only son died and the woman was a widow she did not know Jesus she was not looking for him she had paid a place in the burial ground they had finished digging the grave they came and they carried the coffin they were carrying the boy to bury him and on the way on the way there was an encounter not an encounter with a man Man, not an encounter with the devil an encounter with the God of the turnaround and Jesus stopped them when Jesus stopped them I believe the woman got confused how can my child die and you are stopping me please I don't have time I want to go and bury my child and Jesus said wait he laid his hand on the coffin he said and the boy came back to life can you imagine they had printed t-shirts they were wearing t-shirts that the boy is dead carry him to bury him and the God of turnaround came in and he spoke a word and the boy came back that is the God of the turnaround I am here to prophesy upon your life upon your marriage upon your family in the by the finger of God you will see the God of the turnaround I don't know what you are going through you will see the God of the turnaround I don't know what has happened to you you will see the God of the turnaround you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God it's the same yesterday it's the same today it's the same forever when God say yes no man can say no when God lifts you up no man can bring you down God is on your side power is on your side lift your hands shut the God of turn around the God of turn around see that glory show me Psalms 113 verse 7 to 9 he raises the poor out of the dust he who is that? Who does that thing? Not God. Which God? And lifts the needy out of the ash heap. Verse 9. Eh? That he may sit him with princes, 
with the priests of Hebrew. Verse, see verse 9. He grasped a barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Then he ended up saying, Praise the Lord. He lifts the poor. <laughs> he lifts the ah, Jehovah, the lifter, the lifter of my head, the lifter of my soul. He lifts the poor. He Kabakata for promotion does not come from the east, it does not come from the west. Promotion coming from the Lord. He sets another man up and bringeth another man down. He is the lifter of my head, the God of Tonara. Baramandoga, see that. He lifts the He lifts the poor. There was a man called Joseph. Joseph left his father's house. He went to a strange land and he entered the house of a man called Potiphar. Potiphar's wife lied against Joseph. An innocent man was sent in prison. He was in prison for 11 years. But something shocked me in the Bible. God came and gave a dream to Pharaoh. All the magicians of Pharaoh could not interpret the dream. And when Joseph came, Bible says, as Joseph came to interpret dream, as he interpreted dream, he became a governor. There had never been a governor in Egypt. The place was created for him. There is a dimension of favor when it comes upon you huh? God does not give you room he create room for you huh? am I talking to somebody here it was created for Joseph huh? maybe they said there is no room huh? favor we create room for you huh? favor we create room for you huh? favor we open your own door huh? lift your hands shut it yeah. sit down do you imagine that there was no election nobody elected him nobody elected him there was no campaign even Joseph he said listen to me when this God begin to act even you you will doubt he said now to do this now to do what Joseph left the prison and a man that was a stranger a man that was a stranger it, be, it did not start from up to down he became a governor there was a boy called David the first day David came he became a general it did not start from a start to know. It just became a general. When God wants to lift you up, it breaks protocol. When God wants to lift you up, it breaks the doors. When God wants to lift you up, it breaks the gate. I speak on your life. In the name of Yahweh, by the power of favor, you are going to be lifted out of the ashes. You are going to be lifted out of poverty. You are going to be lifted out of affliction. You are going to be lifted out of the dust you are going to be lifted out of shame I prophesy in the name of Yahweh you will see the power of God you will see the glory of Lord the God of time see that and, 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 and I actually read about I read about Joseph and I thought that I had seen everything. And you know, and I said to myself, but at least Joseph had a father. So his father was praying for him. Then I went further in the Bible and I came in the book of Esther. And the Bible specified that a little girl that was a captive, her father and mother died. No hope in life. She was an orphan and a stranger and a prisoner. Then something happened. And, and, and the queen made a mistake. When God wants to lift you up, he will make somebody mess up. And the queen made a mistake and the room was open and they began to search for a queen in the whole land the bible said the other girls went to make up but when the turn of esther came she said i don't need to make up i am going with favor the bible specified that esther that was an orphan in the next month she became the queen of babylon that you cannot explain that kind of a lifting her you cannot understand that kind of a lifting her how, how come her how, how how did esther become a queen her what about but a man called Daniel. Daniel was a prisoner, yet he became a prime minister. There is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God that rules over the affairs of men. He sits upon the wings of the wings and he looks upon the earth. He is the God that rises upon the cloud. When he arises, the enemies will scatter. He is the mighty man in battle. He is the great I am. I am that I am. The mighty provider. The lily in the valley. The rose of Sharon. The the rock of Gibraltar, the rock of ages, I prophesy, you will see the power of God. 
You receive the power of God. Lift your hands, shout the God of turn around. The God of turn around. See that. There was a man called Naman. Naman Labadabaroshkia. Naman had been sick for a very long time. <laughs> he was so sick that he accepted his sickness as his identity. He said, I'm not trying to change it again. <laughs> and the little girl said, If you can meet the prophet, Alaba go to here. And Naman met the prophet. And the prophet spoke a word and he got into what the Bible specified that when Naman came up, his flesh became like that of a baby. In John chapter, is it chapter 9, I believe so. Chapter 9, yes, the Bible says, Jesus prayed for a man that was born blind he was not just born blind he didn't have eyeballs after the prayer bible specified when the man saw when he came back people said is this him is he not him they began to argue he said it is me he said it is not you what kind of a miracle can a man have that his own brothers cannot recognize him the god of turnaround when this god put his hand on your head when papa god touch your life when i am a kind of car i prophesy God will touch you. Favor will come on you. Grace will speak for you. Lift the one shari. Say the God of Canada. The God of Canada. See that. He said the man came back and he enters. Bible says, listen, oh God, the guy sat here hmm? and he was making money and Jesus healed him. And he, 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 you know, Jesus told him, go and wash. The man went and wash. There is a place where you wash, where you come and people don't know you. He went and wash. Jesus prayed for the man. They told him, go and wash. Why go and wash? It was not normal water. The man washed and kept. He said, and where he was, the people said, it is not him. He got, he said, it is, I said, it is not you. They didn't recognize him. They went and called for his parents. They say we must do blood tests here. Is it this? Is it Kevin? Is it not Kevin? Is this Kevin? There's an there's a fever that come on your head when you pass in the quarter. People start. Is that correct? Is that Ah! I came to activate. I came to open the door. I am a prophet of God. God knows me. Heaven hears my voice. I came to speak to you in the name of the God that I serve. I bless the demand on the apostolic oil. I bless the demand on the apostolic grace. I bless the demand on the prophetic anointing. And I prophesy. Let heaven come on your head. Let there be a turn around. Let the poor become rich. Let the sick become healed. The oppressed be delivered. I open your life. Receive the God of the turn around. Lift your hands. With all due respect, a few years ago, somebody came to church and I recognized the person and I asked the person, do you know me? And he said, I don't know you. That was my classmate. At one time, we slept in one room and he came to this town and he had a problem and he watched me on TV. He did not see recognize me and he came to church to see me. I said, don't you know me? He said, I don't know you, sir. Sir, I need your help. I said, you don't know me? He said, sorry, man of God, I don't know you. And I said, oh boy, na me, na me. He said, na you. And we slept together in the same bed in university. And the man said, na lie, na lie, na lie, na lie. There is a favor that come on your head. My God will turn your life around. I am speaking to somebody here. In the next three months, something will happen to your life that nobody can explain. There will be a turn around in your life, in your marriage. I am a shanga. The God. The Bible says, ah, uh, when Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. They did not recognize him. Listen to me. When this God touched you, listen to me. Jesus does not only save the, the people. He can heal the sick. He can raise the dead. He can bless your life. He gave a child to Sarah. He gave a child to Hannah. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, by the favor of God, there will be a turn around in your life. Somebody said the God of Tanara. The God of Tanara. See that. Oh, 
Shadabaga Mungro de he, Halabaga Ziga na mashokre. Am I talking to somebody here? He said, Who be you? I said, Kevin. He said, Sorry, sir, which Kevin? Sorry, sir, which Kevin? There is somebody in the university, I was, they will sleep and leave their house, I will dry clean for them. I will dry clean. He said, Sorry, sorry, sir. Which in all humility. There is a way God bless you and your enemies become learn humility. There is a blessing that humble <laughs> that people look you, they become humble. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, grand. They will call you grand by force. Not be, because they don't they don't understand. It's not that something strange has happened to you. They cannot explain how it happened to you. There are people whom are blessed. And we can explain that blessing. His father is rich, so he went abroad. We, we, it's God's grace, but yes, we know, we know that kind of God's grace. It's God's grace that passed through his father's money, so we can understand the God's grace. But when an orphan like Esther become a queen, you cannot attribute the lifting to any man. That's not one that, that, that God of the turnaround. When you, when there is no, when the God of turnaround operates in your life, you cannot attribute your lifting to the work of any man. It is not traceable to any man. Even the man that claims to help you knows that his help did not take you where you are. No, he knows. He said, No, I help him, but this one is not me. It's God. The God of Jamara. I've seen God lift men. I've seen God lift people. I thought it was just something we read in the Bible until I began to see it physically that there is a God. Hey, there is. Oh, seven apostles to the man. There was a time in his life he, he actually had to sleep in a toilet. One time he trekked from Lagos to Benin. That is from like it's like from 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 can I say Bamela to Yaounde two times? Yes. That's like yes. Lagos to Benin is 10 hours with car. So imagine how many, how many days with food. And he began the ministry in 2004. 15 years later, two jet, two helicopter. Five hundred branches. How? Explain. No, explain. You like to explain. Explain. The God. You, 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 you don't know how that a man went and opened a church in a his village is Aochi. Aochi is like Balangi. In case you don't know, it is a village. It is friend has changed. It is village, villagized, villagealistic. I mean, village where they turn a country talk now. Village. I'm telling you. But his presence now he has gotten to the point where he builds the road to the OG. He construct a man constructed road that government did not construct. Who told you you will end like this? I came to challenge them in the name of Jesus by the favor of God. I prophesy the God of turn around will lift you up and put a smile on your face. Amen. Sit down, please. You don't get what I'm saying. He says, Surely you will have sorrow. Friend, I have seen in life that there is one powerful thing that we don't know. It is called tears. Tears have too much power. If you don't cry, I can't see you. Tears have power. He said in the book of Exodus, chapter 2. Verse 22 24. He said, I have seen. He said, and the people of Israel cried, and God saw their tears and heard their prayer. They cried. And God said, I'm coming down. I don't have a cry. They cried. They cried. In Hebrews chapter 5, I believe so. Verse 7. He said, and Jesus cried. He cried, and God heard him. There is a place of crying. In Psalms 56 verse 8 He said you have kept my tears in your bottle And you have written them in your book So tears have a voice Tears have a prayer request You have kept my tears in your bottle Friends You are like a you, Your cry is not in vain oh. This is your cry you, you, Our God is Loves us And the love of God Means he is grieved when we are grieved God is not God is not happy. Jesus came to where Lazarus died. He came to raise him here. He still cried. I don't understand. 
you came to the other day, you cried. He said, and Jesus wept. Why was Jesus crying? Because that dimension of miracle, he needed to cry. He needed tears. They saw him weeping because tears came from his eyes. He didn't say, and Jesus shouted. He wept. Wept means there is tears. Cry, there may be no tears. I can't do this. Ah, I cry. But he said, and Jesus wept. Wept means tears came out. But he came to raise him. They now say, Father, thank you because you have helped me. When did God hear him? When he cried. His tears were saying, Lord, look at my friend. And Jesus cried for us on the cross. It is finished. I'd like you to put your faith in the finished works of Christ. No matter, listen, I'm, I'll tell you as a man of God, prophetic seed, all the guys, it's good. At the end of the day, your faith must be totally rooted in Jesus Christ to understand that everything you receive from God is on the merit of Christ and not of your works. It's not because you sow the seed. That seed is just an expression of your faith. The truth is that it's because of Jesus. What can I do to experience the God of Tonara? Number one, you must call upon him. Are you with me here? You must do what? You must do what? You must call upon him. Hmm. Show me Psalms 91, verse 16. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Hear something. Eh? Hear something. Sickness does not glorify God. It says in the day when you are sick, call upon me. When I deliver you, you shall. So oh, poverty is demonic. It says if you are poor, so there is no glory in poverty. There is no glory in sickness. There is no glory in sin. There is no glory in rejection. He said, call upon me. So that is the key. If you must experience the God of turn around, you must call upon him. Not call upon your father. Call upon your God. Call upon God. Show me, is it Calabar? Show me First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called him Jabez. Jabez means sorrow because I bore him in pain. Verse 10, see something. And Jabez called on the God of thunder and said, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory and that your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God got to him. If God answered his prayer, why will he not answer our own? Jabez mother gave him a name that became a curse and Jabez went through pain and suffering like some of us are going through pain now I want to first prove to you it is not God's will for you to be in pain constantly in pain is demonic your marriage never has peace demonic something must be handled God is not glorified when you beg for a living God is not glorified when you borrow for survival. God is not glorified if a man of God prays and, and, and walks and the church does not grow. Barrenness does not glorify God. Unfruitfulness does not glorify God. God is not glorified if a woman is married and has no child. He said, call upon me. I will intervene. It's a sure promise. God does not promise what he has not done. I didn't say what he will not do. Before he promised, he has already done it. But most of us, in times of trouble, we call upon men. Then when men fail us, we now call upon God. Now come and say, this is my last bus stop. Which one was your first bus stop? Who asked you to be trying bus stops? Who, who told you that? This is this where we fail. I'm trying to open your heart to make you understand that who you call upon in the day of trouble is a sign of who you trust in your heart. When you lack house rent, who do you call? There are people who only pray after all their conditions are filled. No. Call upon him. When you are in a situation and something happened, before you start call, call upon him. You just receive a news that something happened, your mama is in the hospital. Oh, mama is in the hospital. Before you call even your pastor, kneel down say, Father, help me. Why is it that we only ask for God's help when the help of 
when our strength, our wisdom and ability are filled? Why do you only remember God when your wisdom and strength has failed? Why is it so? Why don't we have the reflex to call upon God? There are many of us, you will testify. There are many times you get into trouble, into certain situations of your life. You, you only call upon God after. After you have called the doctor, you have called this. And something happens in the night, your child becomes hot. Before father intervene. As you say father intervene, then you carry him to hospital. But you are first of all called upon your God. People don't see God work in their life because they don't call him. There is a time to call him. He says seek the Lord early and you shall find him. So there is a time if you seek him, you will not find him. Call upon God. Let him become a reflex. We are in church. We need speakers. Before you come and be calling for seat, call on God. Let's first of all pray. Father, we need speakers. Lord, what do we do? We need to, we need to arrange speakers. We pray first. You may be shocked. You may not call for any seat. As you are praying, the God of Tonara will speak to a person. Life becomes easy. Listen to me. The secret of enjoying favor from men is calling on God, not on men. The more you call upon men, the less you see from them. But the more you call upon God, because when you call upon God, you must use men to walk. <sighs> Show me Romans chapter 10 verse 13. He said, God is rich to everyone. Rich to everyone who calls upon him. Rich, not poor. Rich. He can do it for you at any time. Bazoshi Agaba. Yeah. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. Hmm. No, take it from verse 12. I like God is rich. Yeah, this is it. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all. This is what? Is what? Is rich to how many? To is rich. It means if you are poor, call upon him, he will be rich to you. He is rich. It means rich means he has access in grace, in favor, in healing. He is rich in everything you ask. He says he has more than enough for reading. Call upon him, he will give you. It's time for us to start praying again. I'm telling the truth. We are too dependent on men and they have failed us. It is time to return to the God that saved you because that same God can bless you. You did not become saved by calling on a man. You called on the name of Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart and you were saved. That same Jesus that entered your heart. Do you believe you are saved? You, do you see Jesus? You just said it now. I believe he entered. It means, why can't you say, Jesus, hear me? Don't you also believe that you will do the same thing? If you can say, Jesus, enter my heart, then he comes and enter. If you say, Jesus, hear me, he will not hear you. If he entered you, he will not hear you. What is the fear? It's because we are, we are, we like calling on men. Because we don't trust God. We trust men. A minute you have trouble, no hassle, you start thinking, I'll come away. Okay, that man go for America. Why don't you first need what has happened to your knees? What has happened to your why don't you first need to say, Father, help your boy, help your boy? Even if it's two minute prayer, even if it's 30 second prayer, I'm telling you, prayer is not in the hours spent, but it is in the word said and the faith released. It's not how many hours you spent, it's what you said. Father, help your child. Peter was walking on water. And he began to sink. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter was a fisherman. There is no fisherman that cannot swim. True or false. But when he began sinking, what did he say? Lord, save me. I can swim more. But I don't want to practice my swimming skills here. We don't know what can happen now. I may, be, I may die. Do you know what they call a fisherman? Fish and men are people who are in the water. There is no fish. A fish listen, there are fishermen that can swim for a lake. They swim from the middle down. Yes, they swim. They are divers. They are divers. But yet, when Peter began to sink, he refused to trust in himself. And number two, there were disciples in their boat. He could have said, James, I'm like, hey, let me go. throw me that rope. No, uh -uh. sir, save me. Listen to this. This is Peter. Peter can swim. He left the boat. In their boat, there are more than there are about ten disciples there. They have nets. They have rope. They have everything to help them. But yet in that situation, in that, in that place, James Peter says, I will not swim. I will not call on James. Jesus, help me. Because God is rich to all those that call upon him. Can I show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't hearing me at all. 
Psalm 145 verse 18. He said, all those that call upon him in truth, he heareth them. Can I tell you this? The only hindrance that can stop God from hearing you when you call upon him eh, is bitterness in your heart. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord shall not hear me. And if he does not hear you, he does not answer. Apart from that, if your heart is the heart, bitterness is the only hindrance. Bitterness, unforgiveness, and grudges are the only hindrances to God hearing a man when he calls upon him. If there is no bitterness, that's why it's good to be forgiving people because if you keep bitterness in your heart, the day you will call on God, God will not hear because nothing chokes the voice of the man in the realm of the spirit like bitterness in his heart. When there is bitterness in your heart, you become a spiritual dumb. You are talking in prayer, you are talking to yourself. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I keep iniquity in my heart, the Lord shall not hear me. Psalm 145 verse 18. The Lord is near to those who call upon him in truth. In truth. What is that truth? In openness, in humility. Before they can hear him. It's a promise. Psalm 91 verse 14 to 15. He said, because he has set his love upon me, he shall call upon me in the day of trouble. I will answer him. I will honor him. I will deliver him. I will long life. Will I satisfy him? I will answer him. I will honor him. I will deliver him. I will long life. Will I satisfy him? Jeremiah 33 verse 1 to 2. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and show you. Look at all. Are all these promises for joke? No. God has put all these promises. So when you ever, listen to me, don't be ashamed to pray to God for anything. He's your father. Be, oh yeah. It's not about good. It's just, Laga baga baga baga. Sometimes it's not laga baga. Speak in English. Say what you know. Don't me say laga baga. You have trouble. What is laga baga? You have problem. You have trouble. You don't even know what you are praying. Don't leave the laga baga. Pray in English, Father. As I this way, I'm not eating. I'm hungry. Oh. Talk. Unless you are there, laga baga. Say, no, Lord, give me grace when I'm hungry. Thank you. Eat, pray. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But can I shock you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a dimension there is something very important that I'll put it at the end which is the most important thing among all now there is a dimension where God says before you call away our answer ha. show me as that's 25 24 sorry yeah it shall come to pass that before they call C that is what C I will answer A and why they speak as I will hear H. What is that? Cash. Say cash. What is C for? Call. What is A? Answer. What is S? Speak. What is H? Hear. Bring it back. That is it then. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Look at the point. While they are still speaking, you have to speak. Speak. I will hear. Speak. Lord, help me. Cry. Help me. He will help you. If there is faith. Number two that you need to see the God of turnaround. Can I tell you this one? Praise. Somebody holler praise. Shout it loud and say praise. praise. Let's act 16.25. I will not read that one. I will give the scripture later. He said when Paul and Silas began to pray and to praise the Lord. He said there was an earthquake in the prison and the foundations of the prison were shaking and the Bible specified that all the chains were broken and all the prison gates were open. How managed? They were in prison. How did the turnaround happen? By praise. When they praise, everything changed. If you must see the God of turnaround, you must not only pray, you must praise. Become addicted to praise that in the midst of trial you are dancing. He said, Let a two double edged sword be, and the high praises of their God be in their mouth. Praise. For God inhabits the praises of his people. Let's see 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20 to 25. So they rose early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord and your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. 
verse 21 and when he had consulted with the people he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army of the Lord saying praise the Lord praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever now read, read there now when they began to to sing and to praise that the Lord set ambushes against the people of Amnon, Moab, and Mansiah who had come against Judah and they were defeated. Just leave it there. The real nations came against one. War came. They didn't pray. Praise the Lord. The God of Elijah is still alive as they were singing. I have a very big God who is always by my side. A very big God who it's, it's as they began, Bible specifies to tell you that the intervention was because they sang. Not as, it's as they began, it means the God of Turner was waiting. As they started singing, they did not pray. Not every trouble requires prayer. Someone requires praise. Locks have different keys. As they began to praise, they listen to me, child of God. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving. With what? Thanksgiving is praise. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in man. I will enter his cause with praise. So with that praise, you don't enter. So you are talking from far. I will enter with praise. It is time to ah, yeah. It is Psalms 32 verse 7. He said, the Lord surrounds me with songs of deliverance. Walking in dominion. I am walking in dominion. Now, you don't understand. Those are songs that, songs of deliverance. There is a dimension of trouble you enter. You only come out by radical dancing. You dance, Bible says, they put the walls of Jericho. And God said to them, for these walls you have to walk around. Child of God, the obstacles you meet have different ways to remove them. If you meet a mountain on the way, Jesus says, speak to the mountain. If you meet a door, he says, ask for a key. If you meet a gate, he says, break. If you meet war, he says, praise. And wars are the worst dimension of trouble. Gates are easily broken. He said, the wall of Jericho was so, the wall, it was very thick that 20 horses could run on the line and not touch themselves. So they could not break that kind of a wall. There was nothing they could use. So God was saying, if this is a mountain, speak to it. If it is a, a door, look for a key. If it is a gate, break it. But if you get to a wall, when you have prayed and fasted, and your trouble has not changed, it is not a gate, it is a, a, a wall. If it was a mountain, prayer and fasting can bring it down. But if you pray, you fast, nothing changes. Then what you are going through is not a gate. Because no Normally gates are broken by fasting. He said, I shall break and open the gate. What is fast breaking? It is fasting. But if you pray, yet the spiritual husband does not want to go. It is not a gate. Doors are opened by keys. What is key? A key is the prophecy. If you have entered problem and they give you prophecy and the trouble did not end, then it is not a door. If now you get to a dimension after going to every man of God and sowing seed and nothing has changed, it means you are faced with a wall. And walls only crumble by praise. Engage into violent alabataka. Wake up every night uh, and, and take your entire and tie on your stomach uh, and nip triplets walking in dominion. As you are singing, you are jumping. Uh, your husband may think you are mad. Uh, you jumped in the whole house. Uh, dance unto you, sweat. Uh, sweat. Bible said David danced. He danced around uh, and they thought he was do a kind of dancing uh, that looks stupid to man. Uh, they call it high praises. Uh, in that dimension of praise, uh, you don't care how people see you. Uh, when you are dancing, you can carry a chair and put on your head. Uh, it is high praises. Uh, that is the only thing that brings walk down. Uh, it can break barrenness. Uh, it can break the devil. When you praise your God, it will raise you up. So learn is a key. If I pray, you know change. I leave prayer. I take seven nights of praise. <laughs> there is power, there is power, there is power in. After I sing and hey, there is a lack of, there is a way you enter trouble and you enter hospital and you look at your mother, she's sick, <laughs> and you just look at her and you just remove your shoe, huh? and you turn around her. Huh? You'll be faithful, Lord. Nobody expects you to say that at that time. 
but you understand that this is a war it must be brought down the turkey is sacrifice let us see job chapter 42 verse 8 to 10 now therefore take for yourself seven bulls and seven rams go to my servant job seven bulls and what and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant job we pray for you for i will accept him i will do what i will accept who job i will accept who when job come and pray we sacrifice you did see him according to your folly whatever because you have not go to verse 9 read now verse 9 everybody so eliphaz brought accepted the lord's day job verse 10 he read that and the lord don't it he taught the captivity of job when he prayed with sacrifice show me first samuel 7 verse 10 he said after samuel sacrificed the lord turned that oh sacrifice knocks upon the gates of thunder <laughs> and, and, and as and as Samuel was offering the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were defeated. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. God gave prophecy to Abraham. He said, Your wife will have a child. For more than 24 years, there was no child. But the day in the day that God was passing out and Abraham brought sacrifice and lay the word came that by this time next year sacrifice you must learn it Psalms 50 verse 14 it's 50 verse 4 it says gather my sins around me who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice friends promises and prophecy bring expectation sacrifice bring manifestation sacrifice it is a law it is a kingdom law. It is by the principle of sacrifice that God brought a turn around on the world. He gave his son as a sacrifice to turn the destinies of men. Everyone was heading straight to hell. But God gave his son as a sacrifice. And by that one act, the whole world has turned around. Now people are receiving Jesus. I was watching something yesterday and the man of God had a crusade and, and 89 Muslim clerics clerics, pastors, Muslim they received Christ, I was shocked the other day in Iran, they baptized 2,452 people in Iran 2,452 in Iran they were baptized all of these things, not because of Joseph it's because the sacrifice of God is still speaking today, Jesus Christ he said an ever brought offering and God looked up his offering with favor friend sacrifice sacrifice that's the 13 and what does God do what does he do when God wants to tell you God does only one thing can I tell you that thing favor in fact two things mercy and favor now all that let us see some 102 verse 13 this is the two things that God gives you when God wants to turn your life around you need only two things he doesn't give you money these two things is enough. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Child of God, if you read that scripture from verse 1, they went through a moment of pain, suffering, and shame. But when the time came, two things, it means only two. What we say, and the Lord gave Joseph, wait, favor. What did God give Esther? Favor. What did he give, Dan give Daniel? Favor. What did he give David? Have you noticed that? The common denominator among all men that God lifted is favor. I've noticed, read with any person that God helped, if you check where, you say, and the Lord favored him. But there is no favor without mercy. That is why you go pray. When you pray, like, roof or floor, cry, Lord, show me mercy. When God show you mercy, no matter how busy God is he cannot turn his ear on the cry of mercy no whether God no matter what is happening there is nothing that draws God's attention on you like your cry for mercy learn how to cry for mercy if you have asked for a child and you have not had a child stop praying for a child start praying for mercy because if mercy come favor we follow when favor come uh, what is that everything hand mercy it's time to pray. God told me. He said, he said, the, he said, the key into the God of the turnaround. He said, if you want to see me, that's what he told me, as the God of turnaround, 
you must understand mercy and favor. Don't come and ask for money. Mercy. Mercy. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Mercy. He said, by, by his mercies, we are not consumed. He said, this trouble will have consumed me. But because God showed me mercy, he preserved me. Mercy. Mercy. In the midst of your mistake, mercy will sustain you. Mercy. Alaba. Mercy. Friend, no matter how you try to be right, you will do wrong things without knowing. That's why you need mercy. And even if you don't do any wrong thing, your righteousness is not still a good standard for God. You need mercy. Mercy is what upgrades a man and puts him in the righteous standard of God. Mercy. When God shows you mercy, he doesn't see there. He's just, he's a, he's a crystal here. Does that. Ay, 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 ay. Mercy. Can I tell you something? Any door that mercy did not open for you, favor cannot sustain you there. It is mercy. Where mercy can. Mercy. Genesis 39 21. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he showed me that one. And he gave him mercy and favor. Two things he gave him. I have checked everywhere. I keep seeing this a key people of God. There is no one day that Joseph prayed for anything. I have seen that great men don't pray for material things. They pray for God's mercy and favor and it changes everything. It is time to grow to know that the secret, the, the gateway into everything God has is mercy and favor. If God show you mercy, let's see that Genesis 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. If you go to, I think, verse 2 or 3, it's the same thing again. Mercy and favor. Mercy and favor. Mercy and favor. Cry for mercy. Cry. Lord, have mercy on your boy. Lord, have mercy. He's your child. Lord, have mercy. Cry. Oh my God. Depend. Depend on mercy. Cry for it. Believe it. Stand for it. Mercy. Show me mercy. There is no turn around. Why? Listen to me. Listen. In. I said it is the mercy, it is your cry for mercy that attracts God's attention to your situation. If you are suffering, you don't cry for mercy. God is not seeing you. Cry. Mercy. Son of David. Have what on me? Mercy. Lord, are you looking at me like this? Look at your child. Lord. Your daughter needs a husband. Help your daughter. Show me mercy. He will hear you. You see God there. If you know how to pray. He said if we pray according to his will. He hears us. And if he hears us. He answers us. You should know how to talk to your father. Go to mercy. You understand before you man boast. Lord show me mercy. Show me mercy. And when God shows you mercy. What does he give you? He said God showed him mercy. And gave him. So number one is what? Number two, favor. Favor. You see the second thing it gives you? Favor. When favor comes, favor. <laughs> favor is divine approval that brings earthly acceptance. You get what I'm saying? It's a divine approval that brings earthly acceptance. Favor is a key that opens the, the storehouse of heaven to release provision to a man. When a man, there is no man who is favor that can be stranded. Favor is a heavenly currency that empowers a man to purchase in heaven and on earth. When a man is favored, he can purchase spiritual things, he can purchase physical things. A heavenly currency that enables a man to purchase from the heaven and the earth is called favor. Favor. Proverbs 22 verse 1. He says favor is better than silver and gold. Favor is better. Favor is better than money. Favor will bring money. Money will not bring favor. Are you following me here? May favor come upon somebody here. Are you saying amen? Are you saying amen? Say, Lord, I ask for mercy. I ask for favor. Ah, favor is divine likeability. <laughs> divine likeability. Likeability. That brings human acceptability. <laughs> Show me a man who is favor. 
I will show you a man whose enemies are sitting without knowing. You know your main problem? You. You pray. You know, get favor. If favor come, your hardship will end. I'm telling you, this is no, this is a turn as well. Now, two I don't study, I'm God don't tell me to. Until God's favor enter your life, forget. You will still be stranded. You will still be praying. You will serve God. You never see a reward until you get favored. Get favored. Favor is the, the, ah, yeah, yeah. Favor is, it, it, it is supernatural perfume. It changes your sense spiritually. It makes you acceptable before men. Favor. Favor. You need to cry for favor. Take time every day and pray. Lord, show me favor. Leviticus 26 verse 9. He said, I shall look upon you with favor and make you fruitful and multiply you. So when God wants to multiply you, he grants you what? Favor. If I may give you number three, thing that God gives you is Grace. Somebody had like grace. Shout it out. Say grace. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Paul said, I am what I am by there. So number one is what? Mercy. Number two? Number three? Grace. I, grace. I am what I am. Favor makes people give you things. Grace make you. See the difference? Can I say this? If I am favored, eh, people will pay my house rent. But when I have grace, I become a landlord. Did you hear me say? You didn't hear at all. Favor make people give you things and do things for you. But when grace come upon you, it is you. Grace, eh, it changes. That's why you need grace and favor. When grace come, okay, I am a man of God now. It is grace. It is grace that made me what I am now. Favor will make you come to this church. After saving you, sow me a seed. That's favor. But grace makes me prosperous. Grace makes me rich. It makes me great. I am what I am by the grace of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? The gr grace is a divine platform that enables a man to operate in the dimension of God on the earth. When grace comes, you stop it, it, it takes away mortality and replaces with immortality. Hang the chief touch Paul and they were taken to the sick and they were healed. Is that favor? That's grace. That's grace. That's grace. There's a difference. There's a difference. When favor begins to operate, people will pay your rent. Yes, they will pay your rent. You will not have money. People will give you money. But when grace begins to operate, you will become rich. A man can be favored. He does not have a shop. People are always just to say, I better money pay a renter. It's good. But when grace comes, it makes him a 20, he, he becomes the owner of 20 shops. Because grace makes the man. Favor brings things. So you need grace. You see why you need grace? The final thing that God lands on your head for turn around is grace. Don't play with grace. That's why if you see any man, any man in whom you see the grace of God, honor him and receive whatever you need. It is not wisdom to challenge a man that is operating in a dimension of grace that can meet your needs. No matter what you know, even if the man does not know like you, if he has grace, be wise enough to go for that. If some man gets something, no, take him. Because God's grace has been released upon men in these places because in this dimension of turn around, you must encounter a person. Certain things will not change in your life to a certain man prays for you. That is true. Not true. Not true. Not true. You want to try? Tell one Not true. Not true. I tell you not true. There are some things that will not stop until somebody pray for you. In a dimension of mercy and favor, you can do it by yourself. But in a dimension of grace, it needs a man. I'm telling you the truth. This way is important. This one to end this message now. It's the let the guy said to, to, to Naaman. He said, I know a prophet. God only turned the story of Naaman around where he met Elisha, the prophet. There are certain dimensions of turn around you will not experience from God until you encounter a man operating under grace. Don't play with men. I'm telling you. Honor men of God. Don't be among those who fight them. Don't do that thing. Honor them. You can sit in your house and you watch a man on TV. 
you touch TV and you praise, your life changed forever. You don't have to be there. Honor is the key. The doors of the house of grace respond only to the key of honor. You don't even have to give anyone. If you just honor it, ah, this on TV, they pray for somebody getting you say, ah, master, God is great. If you just watch televisions, they pray for somebody and you appreciate the miracle, it will, it will just flow. But if you criticize it, the door is shut. Don't say, I need no man. You need a man. God is not a man. But he manifests himself, he manifests himself to men through a man. You need a man. In this, this third thing, many people have not seen turn around because they are neglecting the man God put in their life. Have you not seen the story of Hannah? Hannah went to the temple every day and prayed for more than 20 years. And she never had the child. But the one time that she prayed and Eli spoke, First Samuel 1 from chapter 17, he said, Eli said to Hannah, may God give you a child. The next verse in verse 19 says, and, 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 and Elkanah met his wife and God remembered her. God only remembered Hannah after that Eli spoke. Eli the priest. So Hannah came to the temple and she will cry on the altar. She will pray, God help me. And the pastor will sit there. She will go her. Not knowing that until that man spoke. One day she came, she was still crying. And the Holy Spirit made the man to come. He, he said, what's wrong? She said, Master, man of God, please leave me. I'm crying, me. I'm crying me to God. He said, but I'm the man of God now. Man of God. Why is wrong? I don't have a child. He said, may God give you a child. He didn't speak for long. He, like, he was even joking. Yeah, may God give you a child. But he said, the next person, and God remembered her. The man. When Samuel anointed Saul, turn around, he left from a farm, from, from, from a farmer to become a king. David was a shepherd in the bush. When Samuel anointed him, he left from the bush and became king. There is a turn around that can only come by an encounter with a man under grace. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, by the grace of God operating in my life, I speak to everyone here that in this very year, there shall be a turn around in your life. Hey.